the DRC in particular, um, what would be your um, risk profile of that country be? Uh, thanks for having me, firstly. Uh, I think the biggest risk factor for in, in investors' minds in terms of the DRC is the security concerns, uh, just regarding some of those mines in the east uh, where we've seen conflict I in the past and the potential for conflict rising again. So I think that's going to you know, play you know, hugely on investors' minds, just that security concern. And recently, of course, we've heard that the, you know, the DRC government requested the EU to, to withdraw by, by August next year. So I think that's playing, uh, you know, looming l rather large on, on investors' right. minds going, going forward. Silver lining, though, on the part of the DRC is <coughs> that as a highly indebted, poor country by World Bank and IMF qualifications, they now qualify for some level of debt relief. What's being done in that respect? Correct. I think, you know, debt relief is, th that date is drawing closer by, by the day. We expect that decision from the IMF in July. Uh, we got a positive assessment from the IMF in, in March, so everything remains on track. Uh, you know, government has, has embarked on, you know, prudent microeconomic uh, policy, and, uh, and we've seen the market sort of, you know, re responding positively to, 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 to the currency in, in that yeah. regard. So that remains uh, on track, and we expect that decision from the IMF in, in July. Okay, whilst we're waiting the IMF's decision, the DRC government's also got to pull its weight in this regard. They are indebted to the tune of 102% of GDP and some kind of fiscal measures need to be taken to try to reduce that debt. Is the government of Joseph Kabila making any concerted effort? In fact, they've made a huge headway in that in that regard. Hence, the positive assessment uh, by the IMF in, in in March, as I said earlier. And what they've done is really uh, managed to curb some of that expenditure. And a lot of that was obviously military uh, military expenditure. Yeah. So they've managed to pull back in in that regard and also enhance some of that you know revenue collection and and, and try to sort of increase that um, that tax base. So the government of uh, you know Joseph Kabila done really well and you know in in I think the market is poised for for a positive outcome come 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 July all right now the uh, CDF is not exactly what we'd call a tradable uh, currency but it is a currency to look out for because as a mining economy and probably the most well resourced or resource endowed country in Africa many people are clamoring to do business in the DRC. You're, you're spot on there. I mean, there's a lot of attraction, obviously, in, in that economy, precisely because because of the mining. And you know, I think you know, uh, if, if if you look at some of these uh, you know measures that the government has put in place to tr to try and get this debt relief in in July, I think that's that's the po we've seen that positive sentiment sentiment being reflected in in the currency, and I think that will continue going going forward. And, and also a huge attraction to you know to, to, to the CDF is these high interest rates um, you know despite the fact that we saw them you know decreasing from 52 to 42 mm -hmm. they remain relatively high and, and will remain wow. a drawing card for for investors looking looking for that yield what about local investors because um, historically Congolese businessmen have been fairly dynamic investors and traders within that economy. As we're looking at reviews of mining contracts, which we'll speak about in, in a second, they would need some kind of access to credit in order to be more active in their economy. If they're borrowing at over 40%, that's a significant burden to the Congolese investor and to the Congolese consumer. You, you know, you, you're right You touch on that, but I think a lot of the interest will primarily, especially in the mining sector, will primarily be from, from uh, you know, off offshore. Uh, but you're absolutely right in terms of, you know, the local investor, the, the local consumer on, on, in, in the economy, those high interest rates are going to be prohibitive. Uh, but I think as, as inflation is, is, is going down, it remains, it r remains high, but is, is going down. Uh, you know, the, the central bank is embarking on, on loosening that, mm. that monetary policy. So, mm. you know, we, we expect growth of, you know, 6.5, uh, next year and, and part of that story is precisely because of the consumer right. and, and, and the local man on the street uh, you know benefiting for, from some right. of these you know prudent uh, macroeconomic policies. Now obviously the DRC was badly affected by a downturn in commodities prices in the 2008-2009 credit crisis and we've actually seen um, some mining giants withdraw their investments from the Congo because of uncertainty on the international trading markets for commodities, but also uncertainty politically as to mm. the stability of uh, the government post the elections. Um, what's the mining outlook for DRC now? 
Uh, you know, given the current environment, I'd say that, you know, that our mining outlook is, is essentially positive. I think we're, you know, we're expecting to see, you know, sub substantial FDI inflows. I think, you know, as you've mentioned that, you know, with this war history, you know, those mining assets essentially remain underdeveloped and there's a huge interest and I think that's going to, to, to remain in, in, in place. Um, obviously with, you know, some of these concerns globally, uh, you know, slightly, you know, slight slowdown, but essentially I think that, um, you know, that, that interest is going to remain in place and that we're going to see in the balance of payments. We're expecting, you know, substantial inflows in, in, in that regard. Um, our only concern would possibly be, in terms of balance of payments, would possibly be on, be on the transfer side of things, right. uh, just given, uh, you know, the fiscal concerns in, in, in the EU and, 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 and donor yeah. countries. Yeah, okay, talking about the EU situation, just in general, beyond the DRC, um, there was a sense that the credit crisis would have uh, reduced donor aid flows by about 17% or one-fifth depending on how you want to look at it. And the most vulnerable countries are countries like Mozambique, Tanzania, DRC, that need that aid for post-war reconstruction. Um, what are the alternatives for a country like Congo? I think for Congo, uh, essentially in terms of those transfers, it's going to you know depend on um, you know this debt relief that's that's coming through, and if if that comes through as as we expect it will, I think you know some of those resources really should be channeled to infrastructure development as well as um, you know humanitarian the humanitarian crisis crisis in that regard. And funny enough, you mentioned that earlier this 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 month the UN did come out and said you know uh, you know this this fiscal constraints on on the EU are going to uh, impact on you know some of that some of that aid mm -hmm. and which which really leaves you know a country such as the DRC right. highly highly vulnerable in 30 seconds anybody wanting to move into mining in the DRC um, should they be concerned about proposed revisions of mining uh, laws such as the government wanting to increase its ownership such as a review of existing contracts uh, not necessarily I think you know we expect a positive outcome in that regard and there's currently on the table there is that proposal um, you know table towards going and expect a decision as in, in July as well.